On December 16, 1985, Paul Castellano and Tommy Bellotti were taken out by a Gambino hit team in front of Sparks Steakhouse. We're going to show a 12-minute clip of the coverage from CBS Channel 2 in New York from that night after it happened. This is great footage that's fairly rare. The analysis done by the reporters is very interesting. At the time of the hit, people weren't sure what was going on, but most believed it was a mob rub-out and would be the start of a mob war. Initially, law enforcement speculated that Paul was taken out because he is facing a criminal trial. An interesting part of the segment is how law enforcement speculated that John Gotti was somehow involved in the rub-out. As you know, informants had been providing information about Gotti's Bergen crew for years with the likes of Willie Boy Johnson and others. Authorities knew that with Neil Delacroix's death, it was possible a move would be made. I found it interesting that Gotti was referred to as part of the Young Turks. That term had been used from the 1920s for the faction of young mobsters who felt that the mustache peats who were the guard in power were outdated and out of touch. Besides the analysis of the hit itself, you'll see the significance of the trials which were taking place involving all the five families. Understand that the feds were already using RICO to its advantage and you were already seeing people flip. The notion that John Gotti destroyed the mob isn't true and you can see and hear for yourself from the broadcast taking place on December 16th of 85. Before we go to the CBS coverage, we'll play a short we did a few days ago commemorating the anniversary of the Paul Castellano hit. If you like this type of real mob content, we invite you to subscribe to the Lee Cole 3 podcast with James Proctor. Today in mob history, our gangster flashback goes back to December 16, 1985, and the rub-out of Gambino boss Paul Castellano and his underboss for two weeks and driver Tommy Bellotti. Here are a few lesser-known facts about what happened. Paul Castellano would have gotten convicted along with the other bosses in the commission trial if he had lived and would have gotten 100 years in prison and would have died in prison. The plan for family if Paul had went to prison was for a committee of Tommy Bellotti, Jimmy Brown, and Thomas Gambino running the family. There was unfinished business regarding the Gotti crew. The plan would have been for the Bergen crew being broken up with John Gotti demoted and placed in another crew. Angelo Ruggiero would have had a more brutal punishment. As far as who pulled the trigger, there are many different stories on what happened, but most likely it was John Corneglia who took out Paul and Eddie Lino who took out Tommy Bellotti. Castellano was the godfather, the reputed head of New York's most powerful organized crime family. But now the hunt is on for his killers, and the police are trying to figure out what the rub-out means to the underworld. We have team coverage of the Castellano murder, beginning with Chris Morgan, who has the latest on the search for evidence. Big Pauli Castellano's spectacular execution was a grisly piece of street theater that has left authorities with dozens of unanswered questions, and apparently few leads. Federal agents and police believe that the three hitmen capped off their seamless contract with a slick getaway in a waiting car. One source said that Otto had the New Jersey license plate number ABM43Z, but today police discounted that theory. That plate number was taken from a car that was seen at about 7 o'clock at night, and we don't expect that that car will show up as being involved in this instance at all. And so while certain investigators are looking for the men who pulled the trigger, trying to figure them out, there are other investigators who are looking for the man who invited Pauli Castellano to come to this location. That location was in front of Sparks' popular steakhouse on East 46th Street. But the restaurant's owner isn't certain Castellano was headed there. I have no idea. We, I must, truthfully, we did not have a reservation, so we'd have no prior knowledge whatsoever. But the deeper question tonight is why? Why Castellano and his bodyguard, Thomas Bellotti, were rubbed out? Clearly, Castellano's image as an all-powerful Don had suffered greatly because of his recent indictment and trial on international car theft charges, plus an upcoming separate trial as a member of Organized Crime's ruling commission. If you took a poll of the people within his family and in the mob in general, they would find him to be a liability rather than an asset to want him dead rather than alive. And some authorities believe that Castellano and the hand-picked Bellotti were victims of young Gambino family Turks who were allied with the late Aniello Della Croce, who was second in command behind Castellano. Who is next in line with Pauli Castellano going down? Well, I would say probably somebody from the, the Della Croce side of the, of the uh, family. The name is Gatti. 
comes up every so often, 46 years of age. What do you think he might be? Uh, I would presume that he's a reasonable candidate. But for the time being, at least, New York City police view the rubouts as potentially disastrous public hazards. Well, ordinarily it's done in a, in a uh, more uh, a quiet place, quiet area, rather than the middle of Manhattan, such as that took place. Even Anastasia was shot inside of a barber shop. Chris Borgen, Channel 2 News. I'm Barbara Nevins at the federal courthouse. Paul Castellano's attorney went to bat perhaps one last time for the dead mob leader today. In the courtroom, the judge agreed to separate Castellano's case from nine other alleged members of the Gambino crime family on trial, charged with running a multi-million dollar international car theft ring. Mr. LaRosa, if this case continued, what would have happened to Mr. Castellano? He would have been found not guilty. What's the point? I, don't think, I don't think there was any doubt about that. After the Castellano decision, faces of the men on trial brightened, as Judge Kevin Duffy said he is considering declaring a mistrial. The judge behind closed doors questioned jurors individually. He asked if television coverage of Castellano's murder last night would prejudice their judgment in the trial of the others. All said no. Nevertheless, the judge said he wants to review the TV coverage himself before making a decision about the mistrial. Here in the big federal courthouse in Foley Square, there are two other mob trials going on, and yet another slated to begin early in 1986. In addition to the Castellano trial, there is the Colombo family trial. Carmine the Snake Persico, the reputed chief of that crime family, and ten others are charged with racketeering and extortion from restaurants, hotels, and labor unions. The third trial is the Pizza Connection case, where 22 mob figures are charged with smuggling $1.6 billion worth of heroin into the United States and distributing the narcotics from pizza parlors. And then there is the so-called Mafia Commission case. Castellano and four other alleged Mafia chieftains were indicted earlier this year by the feds, charged with running an organized crime commission that oversees murder and other criminal activities. That trial is expected to begin in March. In the meantime, back at the Castellano trial, the judge told the jurors today that he would suspend the trial until after the new year. By January 7th, he said he would decide whether to declare a mistrial. Barbara Nevins, Channel 2 News at Federal Court. As we said, last night's hit on Paul Castellano was just the latest in a long line of mob rubouts in New York City. Perhaps the most infamous was the murder of Albert Anastasia in 1957. The alleged head of Murder Incorporated was shot as he relaxed under a hot towel in his favorite barber chair at the Park Sheraton Hotel. That hotel is now the Omni Park Central at 7th Avenue and 55th Street. The barber shop was moved to a different part of the hotel about 15 years ago. In the early 1970s, alleged mobster Joseph Colombo was a leader of the Italo-American movement which was complaining that Italians were being stereotyped as criminals. Then Colombo himself was a target of mob violence, gunned down at an Italian-American rally in Columbus Circle in Manhattan. He remained in a coma for seven years before dying of the bullet wounds. The man accused of ordering the hit, Crazy Joe Gallo, met a similar end the next year. He was gunned down while celebrating his 43rd birthday at Umberto's Clam House on Mulberry Street, Manhattan, the heart of Little Italy. Our team coverage of the Castellano killing continues now with a look at the impact organized crime has on you. You may think you're not affected by the mob. But as Neil Rosenau reports, the cost to you and your family may be very high indeed. If you drive a car in the New York area, federal officials say you pay tribute to Paul Castellano's organization. By stealing cars, organized crime makes big money on used parts, and you pay higher rates for insurance. If you buy meat in the supermarket, Paul Castellano's gang has already taken its cut. Back in the 70s, the price was 7 to 10 cents a pound, added on to the cost of meat by the racket that was going on, where you had to sell to a, a mafia middleman who uh, uh, was paying off to Castellano and a couple of other mafia people uh, in order to sell your meat in New York. Jonathan Quitney's book, Vicious Circles, shows how organized crime's interests are far broader than just gambling, illegal drugs, and prostitution. Most anything that moves by truck costs you more because the mob is involved. 
Crime bosses like Castellano make millions from the clothes you wear, the food you eat, and the roof over your head. That's why the government spends taxes to put the bosses on trial. It's an extra tax that we all have to pay. Um, hidden? It's a hidden tax. Yes, it is a hidden tax. Uh, organized crime is a secret society. Uh, the payoffs are all hidden. Federal authorities say mafia control of the cement industry adds millions to the cost of building in New York City, and that computes to higher rents for everybody. Experts say the mob takes its cut in construction the way it has in the garment industry, by infiltrating unions and corrupting them. This particular group has done that in the garment industry with control of, of the trucking business through control of the, the union, which required uh, each garment manufacturer to sign up permanently to uh, a trucking company. And this was all uh, negotiated by the uh, crooked union as, as the middleman. The objective of organized crime is to make money by any illegal means possible. They rob from all of us. And if they can't get their way by extortion and economic muscle, they're willing to use any means necessary. Paul Castellano proved that once again last night. I'm Neil Rosenau, Channel 2 News. You have to go back six years to find a New York City mob hit with the significance of the rub out of Paul Castellano. Carmine Galante, who reputedly hoped to become the boss of bosses, was gunned down while eating in an Italian restaurant in Brooklyn in 1979. His cigar was still clinched in his teeth when his body was found by police. The name of that restaurant was Joe and Mary's, but it has since been replaced by a Chinese restaurant. Paul Castellano's murder has only added fuel to the public's fascination with the mob. Anthony Mason got reaction today from people in two neighborhoods, the Staten Island community where Castellano lived and the Manhattan block where he died. Along 46th Street today, the curious tried to recreate the already famous Castellano rub-out. For some, it was a way to verify something which seemed almost unreal. Oh, it's probably all part of a movie script. Uh, is Steven Spielberg around here? We're not sure. <laughs> Television crews, including this one from Japan, made it feel like the movies, but it was all very real to those who heard last night's shooting. Six shots, exactly. Boom, boom, boom. That's it. No more. And I've seen the body, one body. I think the mafia is alive and well living in New York City. On Staten Island, where Castellano lived, all was quiet today. A police car and a private security guard kept the press from getting too close. Neighbors wouldn't be quoted on camera, but one called Castellano's death a strange kind of justice. You live by the sword, you die by the sword, he said. A sentiment shared by people who passed the scene of the crime today. They're gangsters, who cares? Yeah. They don't give any value for life. They only kill each other, they deserved it. If you got in their way, they would have killed you just anywhere they wanted to. So they're not going to be missed. But you ought not to gloat about the fact that maybe one mobster uh, killed another because innocent people uh, could have been killed. Midtowners in hectic Manhattan were especially uncomfortable that the underworld surfaced on their streets. But I guess they, uh, they knew what they were shooting at, so... You know, it still is kind of scary, though, I'd have to say. Well, I'm just afraid to be walking up and down the street if things are going to be happening like this here, yeah. in broad daylight. Castellano met his demise last night outside of Spark Steakhouse, but business today was brisk. And it's probably the safest place in the country right now. Still, Sparks was trying to play down any Castellano connection. From hey. time to time, he did come into the store, yes. Would you call him a regular? No, I would not. Ironically, this is the second stroke of fame this week for Sparks, which in this week's issue of New York Magazine was named as having the city's best steak. The owners hope this is the image people will remember, and not this one. Anthony Mason, Channel 2 News, Manhattan. And Governor Cuomo sharply criticized the news media today for using the word mafia in connection with the Castellano murder. Cuomo said it is incorrect to suggest all organized crime is Italian, adding, it's an ugly stereotype that gets used over and over again against Italians. Cuomo said he is obviously more sensitive about the issue because he is Italian. The death of Paul Castellano may have accidentally caused a scare for some rock and roll fans. The New York Post hit the stands late last night with the headline saying the boss is dead. But of course the boss in question was not Bruce Springsteen. The Post later changed his headline to describe a Godfather rubout, but the paper insists the change had nothing to do with any possible confusion over Bruce Springsteen. The paper says they change, it, they change their headlines all the time. The Post uh, could not say how many papers were in circulation with the first issue headline. In other news coming up this evening, a I hope you found the show interesting. 
We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Also, if you could subscribe, like, and share, that would be much appreciated. Lee and I also have a Patreon channel that we're partnering with Angel Gotti on called My Father's Daughter with Angel Gotti. We encourage you to check that out as well as we put up new content several times a week. Finally, we have a channel called Wrestling with the Devil where we talk about professional wrestling, MMA, and boxing. Please check it out as well. Thank you for watching.